Hi, Mark. Good to see you. Um, Good to see you, Andrea. Thanks for inviting me on. And Mark Abraham OBE, is it? It is now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, uh, for a few weeks, it's been Mark Abraham OBE, yeah. Very surreal. Oh, massive congratulations. Thank you. Um, how did you feel when you got that phone call or that letter to say that you was receiving it? So this this year they emailed because of COVID. They didn't send oh, letters wow. out. So immediately I thought it was a scam. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, very, very overwhelmed and proud and all those emotions that you'd expect. But it's 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 so, something that I always thought happened to other people yeah. and it would never happen to me. But yeah, I look forward to, to receiving it in person. And um, yeah, thanks to all the people. Along. I will definitely be taking my mum along and I just want to say (laughs) thanks to all the people who've because it is for obviously campaigning so thanks to all the people and MPs and everyone involved who've contributed in some way to that journey that I've been uh, rewarded for this is for everyone it's not just for me. Oh, that's wonderful. Right Mark what inspired you to become a vet in the first place? I mean when I was um, a young girl um, which feels like ages ago now um, I wanted to be a vet but then I I realized that you had to put animals down and that really what put me off. So, you know, fair play to you to be able to do that and make those tough decisions. Um, so what inspired you to be a vet in the first place? So, Andrea, as my mum will uh, recall, because I can't really remember in that much detail, when I was three, uh, I had a pet tortoise and it had a wound in its leg. And in the wound, it had a like a blue bottle larvae, like a little maggot. And apparently I got a twig from the garden and scooped out the maggot with the twig the leg got better, oh. tortoise got better, and from then on, all I wanted to do was help animals. Oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah. I remember bringing a three, three-legged three um, stray dog home as well. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's a really wonderful story, Mark. So it takes a lot of training, doesn't it? Um, quite a few years training. Yeah, it was the only thing I ever wanted to do, So, which was an advantage, obviously, at that, that age, because I was just immediately focused on learning, mm. schoolwork, homework, hoarding information butterflies moths caterpillars nature wildlife everything to do about animals um so really going through school was a dream because I just couldn't work enough or learn enough because I knew that I had to be that clever to get into university because the competition to vet places was so high because at at that time there was only six unis in the UK doing it doing the course and I got into Edinburgh University and, and weirdly as soon as I got into university that's when I sort of had my teenage years which I've missed because I was studying so hard, but I love studying. I still like studying and uh, learning. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, being a vet, it was, as I said, it's the only thing I've wanted to do, but it's just the best job in the world to help yes. animals. Oh, uh, and, 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 and now on so many levels, you know, on a, on a one-to-one basis in the consulting room, where I haven't, although I haven't um, vetted as such for a couple of years now uh, because of the campaigning, but on a campaigning level, um to help influence and uh, and protect the lives of hundreds and thousands maybe millions of animals now into the, and into the future and also on a tv and media level educating the public also obviously raises awareness and changes behavior and can help animals so lots of different ways of of helping animals and as well as that international work uh, voluntary work and you know uh, and that aspect too so yeah I, I'm thrilled with how things have gone and I could never in a million years have predicted uh, the outcome which is a, no, a campaigning really OBE vet which is <laughs> mental really. Have you ever had any close encounters with animals where they've, I'm sure they've bit you or um, what, what, what's your strangest moment? Um, I mean there's been many uh, here and abroad but you know animals you'll always get nervous dogs that try and bite you they don't really want to bite you as such they're just usually nervously aggressive and and having great teams of nurses and and assistants has always always been very useful in holding animals sometimes you have to sedate them um but yeah abroad you know moon bears in in, uh in animal asia's um chengdu clinic i've operated on uh, animals in the amazon I've, i've i've vaccinated dogs in the in the slums of mumbai um, so there's there's always been um, quite an, an exciting backdrop to a lot of the work I've done, not just in yes. the consulting room. So, yeah, lots of ex- exciting encounters with animals all across the world. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. You, you need to write a, a further book one day. Um, Mark. So let's talk about Lucy's um, law. I mean, 
you've you've actually played a tremendous role in in getting this passed and it's been such a journey for you I mean I met you gosh 2015 I think it was Mark um when I held that event in parliament for you where you was um showing footage in America um and some quite disturbing footage regarding dogs um and that seems ages ago now you've been on such a tremendous journey um T tell me how it started and how you ended up where you are today. Uh, well, Andrea, I mean, in 2009, I saw some puppies coming into my practice at the time. It was an emergency clinic with a disease called parvovirus. Um, cut a fairly long story short. Um, I sort of went undercover, found out where they'd been bought from, and it was a, a legal licensed third party dealer who had bought them in from a legal licensed puppy mm -hmm. farm in Wales. And I kind of thought this wasn't right. Um, I didn't know anything about politics or campaigning or law. So I did an, I started an awareness event, which is which later was renamed Pup Aid after Live Aid, which was a dog show judged by celebrities and um, had music as well, like Live Aid and sort of stalls and, and, and vegan food and stuff. And um, that started in Brighton and moved to London. So basically I started off on a campaigning journey that at the time was only an awareness raising event. And then um, I started to, and after about three or four years, realised that it was helping, but it was no way changing the situation permanently. Um, so I started to go to Westminster and mm. um, my first meeting was with Caroline Lucas, who taught me about e-petitions, which is... I the, think the, she's your the, MP, isn't she, where you live as well? She's, she's just over the border from yes. me. She's in the uh, pavilion. Um, and I'm in Brighton, Kemp Town, and um, but yeah, she's a very obviously very well respected local MP. So she told me about uh, e-petitions, which is the path I then pursued. My second meeting, I won't go through them all. There was about three hundred. Um, my second meeting was with your colleague Neil Parrish, and I was so inexperienced with campaigning that I even took my grandma and my mum to my first oh. meeting with him because it was like oh, was that in was Parliament like, as well? It was in Westminster, yeah, and oh. it was it was in the palace, and then we had drinks on the terrace, and it was like we'd won a some sort of a cereal packet competition to meet an MP in London it was so funny it was so inexperienced didn't really know but, what I mean was I doing. felt like that going to parliament for the first time though I mean you know the it's history mad, isn't it? it's amazing isn't it I, I look still up think and it's like today. what yeah and I always equate it to that that scene in Gladiator when the slaves are entering they they're in Rome for the first time and they're looking up at the Colosseum it's like you know what are we doing here the enormity of it all yeah. I can't even imagine what it must be like for a member to 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 arrive, you know. Yeah, um, so I, I then embarked, good pun, embarked on a journey um, for, as I say, about 300 visits to Westminster, countless e-petitions, um, debates, drop-ins, movie premiere that you very kindly um, hosted in the palace um, of that American documentary, Dog by Dog, which I'm a producer of. And and basically, <laughs> looking back, it was doing everything possible, using every campaigning tool in the in the toolkit, which I'm now yeah. writing a book about, um, to make change happen. So the e-petitions, the MP drop-ins, the the all that lobbying. Um, so so tell thoughts. me a bit about the book, Mark. Actually, because um, for. A, a lot of charities who are setting up and campaigners, you know, this will be a useful Bible, really, for them to use, won't it, so to speak, of, of, so, of how to how to campaign. And I think that's a great idea. So so what's it going to be about? Well, the Lucy's so the Lucy's Law campaign finished with with a banning on third party sales yes, of, of, of puppies and kittens. So it means that now all breeders are accountable. So no more pet shops selling puppies, etc. So my, my aim was always to cure the problem that I had originally seen with those puppies but um, you certainly did that didn't you that's amazing so that's that was always the first step in any puppy farming with regard to the new book and and yeah I wanted to put down really on paper what I'd learnt and use it as almost like a self-help guide for anyone else trying to change the world which sounds all very yeah but it's true you can do it and the yes. tools are out there and it, even if it's not the law you're changing you can uh, raise awareness you can change public behavior which is often sometimes even more powerful than changing legislation i mean the yeah. two together are ideal but there's lots of things that we can do that we may not be aware of mm. most of them if not all of them are free mm. e-petitions writing to an mp like yourself meeting an mp like yourself and slowly making all forms and, and types of or sizes of progress 
So even retweeting something with an e-petition in it is helping. Yeah. So there, there's so much out there that we may not be aware of that we can get involved with. And I only found out about it all because maybe one thing didn't work or one th another thing didn't work as well as it should. So it was almost like, try, try this. Okay, it was like a massive game of chess over 10 years. Yeah. And I, I'm so determined to put down all my experiences to help other people not just with regard to changing animal welfare stuff yes but anything anything that often protects the most vulnerable i mm. think maybe you'll agree with me on that one you know uh, or you know providing a voice for the voiceless there's lots of sort of cliches but it's true yes and and my um and one of my favorite quotes is if you think you're too small to make a difference try sleeping with a mosquito it's a dalai lama quote so the book <laughs> is going to be called be more mosquito how to oh, change wonderful. the world for free yeah well, that's and i'm about well will you come back on when you're ready to yeah it's, it's published in spring 2022 i'm 20,000 words in out of 80,000 and i'm enjoying writing it and it's yeah. it's it's fascinating because what i'm doing is obviously writing about each thing that you can do so the petitions meeting an mp but also the history of why that's important yes. and then a practical guide to how actually we can do it using case studies of how we did it so it's it's it, i think it's going to be a unique book and hopefully will help lots of people yes. maybe even all around the world help make the world a better place because yeah. everyone has something they can do to contribute rather than the negativity the, the blaming and the finger pointing and the apathy that is usually what stops people doing anything so yeah it's, it's a fascinating one to write I must say I mean I, I just I remember when Lucy's law passed um it must have been an emotional moment for you Mark after it being a long campaign this it was an emotional moment as an animal lover, especially because of all the animals, especially the breeding dogs, which are often forgotten in a lot of these campaigns. It's all about puppies. Um, the breeding dogs, which is why Lucy was so important. She was an ex-breeding dog from a, rescued from a Welsh puppy farm. It was shining a light on, on the breeding dogs, especially the females. The males suffer as well. But knowing that this will be a massive help in ending the suffering and pain and torture of so many dogs, um in the uk and beyond and of course their puppies and you know there's still work that needs to be done i certainly haven't taken my foot off the accelerator it looks like we've we're about to change another law in in the process at the moment which is raising the minimum age of imported pups often from overseas puppy farms to six months yes um you know so they're fully rabies protected so they're much more robust to travel to stop illegal puppy smuggling and oh, and as well as it's the only thing on a puppy that young that you can actually enforce because mm. the teeth are different because they're six months old and the adult teeth are through rather yeah. than all the paperwork and passports that are often forged. So that's made progress in the government's animal action plan. Um, they've, they've committed to raising the age. I think secondary legislation will make it six months so it can be tweaked at a later stage without having to go through the whole primary legislative journey. Um, so progress is being made on all sorts of levels. And, and once again, as I, as I said at the beginning, I can't thank you know parliamentarians like yourself enough and the public and celebrities and yeah. you know ethical uh campaign groups and, and charities who are on our on our same page for all coming together for the sake of improving the lives of animals and and for me collaboration is is so key and there'll definitely be a chapter on that in the book because without collaboration it's very very hard yeah, to make with you. the necessary progress at, at the necessary speed Completely. Is what I'm final, final question now, Mark, um, and thank you for your time today. So Pleasure. how did it come about you finding Dylan for Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his wife, Carrie? How, how did that happen? <laughs> um, I, it's, it's definitely one of my favourite anecdotes and I'm incredibly proud of it. Um, OK, so there was, a, there was a few factors. First of all, Barack Obama was gifted some um, some puppies, hmm. um, uh, pedigree puppies, I think Portuguese water dogs. Were you like, involved oh. with that? <laughs> no it wasn't but it did make me think what an opportunity to get to improve uh, so the 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 profile of rescue and uh, missed yeah. missed because they were pedigree pups they weren't purchased but they were gifted yes. um and then I, so that was always in my mind and then um i know I, I knew carrie from from campaigning she's a phenomenal campaigner and we were at a few events together. And then I heard a rumor that um, that they were looking for a rescue dog. And Carrie's only ever got rescue dogs before. Oh, yeah. um, so I, I DM'd her on Twitter and I, and I said, um, can we have a chat before you make this commitment? Because I want to have, have an idea of where you can go to, to 
not get the ma- the most out of this dog, but just to to raise the most awareness about so many things. Um, anyway, so she said, come to number 10 tomorrow. I'll pick you up at four o'clock and you can come up to the flat. Now, you know, the flat isn't like a pokey little student flat <laughs> in, a, in a halls of residence. The flat is quite a big residence in number 11. So I was like, OK, so I went there and, and we and they'd only just moved in. So they'd only literally moved in just a, a few days before. So Carrie was all excited and I had the guided tour uh, and we chat, chat, chat. And I said, look, you know, rescue dog. Yes, obviously adopt a rescue dog. But I want to sort of help you get the most out of it and the most for that dog. And I want and so there's a charity in Wales, which I'm a patron of. And so is Carrie now uh, called Friends of Animals Wales, which only really deal in ex-breeding dogs and puppies that can't be sold because they've got problems so they're m- more likely going to be drowned so Aww. it's breeding dogs that are going to be shot or puppies that are going to be drowned Aww. and Carrie having the massive heart that she has we chat 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 and I said look if you get a dog from there you can uh, promote rescue you can promote Lucy's Law because these are all victims of the third party puppy trade you can promote the fact that you can find puppies in rescue, which a lot of people don't realise. Mm. And you can you can get a, a rescue dog into one of the most famous addresses in the world. You know, yes. or one up on the White House. Now the White House has got one. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, it was all these sort of boxes being ticked in one tiny little bundle of fluff. And um, basically, I introduced uh, Carrie to Eileen Jones, who runs the charity, volunteer-run charity, not one of these big corporate charities. So they, they again, they needed the PR. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, anyway, they, they chatted, and I started getting um, WhatsApp messages from Carrie with pictures of of the dog and and being shared before they'd adopted. And then I was on holiday in Spain 10 days later and, and Prime Minister called, Boris called me on my mobile and I, I it was like very <laughs> that surreal. That must be very surreal, yes. It was very <laughs> surreal and, they, uh, and he said, you know, we've chosen Dylan and how can we make it happen? And um, and then, yes, yeah, so two weeks or three weeks later, I met Eileen off the train from Wales. So did the had... dog already have its name beforehand, did it? No, Before... no. Ah, OK. Oh, no, 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 it actually did. It did. And it yes. had the Welsh spelling because I remember saying it was the different spelling. I remember telling them that. Anyway, we, we met at the at uh, Westminster. They came off the train from Wales. We had the carry case. And I think it had been leaked in, in the Telegraph. It had been leaked in the mail. So there was this bank of paparazzi waiting as we turned the corner into Downing Street, little Dylan looking out. Aww. And we went in. <laughs> and then I remember when um, Boris met Dylan and, and Karen met Dylan, he was so excited and running around the flat. And then we had a few photos in the garden in number 10. But I, one of them, slightly off, off topic, but one of the most overwhelming and most incredible moments for me that day was I took some um, of these Lucy's Law um, rosettes with me. And I remember saying to the prime minister in the garden, would you mind putting one on while he was holding Dylan? And Dylan already had one on the collar, Carrie had one, everyone had one. And he was like, yeah, of course. And for me as the grassroots campaigner, to watch the prime minister putting on your grassroots campaigning rosette of Lucy's Law, knowing everything that's gone into that campaign, Amazing. And go and sort of go, yeah, of course. It wasn't even, you know, it was of course. Yeah. And was for me one of the most incredible moments of my life. Because it was it was like going from 2013, having no idea about politics, yes. law, or history or campaigning, to the Prime Minister wearing the campaign rosette uh, of a law that we'd help change. So for me, it was an incredible day, and Dylan's been a huge success. Did you get a, um, a photo of that moment as well? Because yes, we have. We picture. have definitely got photos, and I can share it with you. Um, Downing Street photographer took it, and yeah, it's 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 been an amazing journey. But okay, you know, it, it wasn't me. It was a whole bunch of people that made this happen on so many different levels, and their pets. And and I really can't thank everyone enough from the bottom of my heart and all my grassroots campaigning team's hearts for for being part of something that hopefully will, will be so influential in protecting animal yes. welfare for, no, it's for a very long one. time. Yeah, I, I've just thought of one last question, actually, sure. if I may. Um, we've seen in the news recently, our Prime Minister Boris saying that Dylan um, is getting a bit fruity around people, <laughs> grabbing their legs. And what advice have you got as a vet for the Prime Minister and anybody else who's um, dealing with that with their male dog? I... I heard that um, the plan was to, for him to get castrated, but the vets at the time in lockdown weren't doing routine operations. Oh, okay. 
So I'm only saying this because this is what I've heard. I think it's on the cards for him to be muted, oh, okay. which I'd be very surprised if he isn't. Um, and the the only problem I have with that is not necessarily with the neutering, but sometimes with behaviours, if they get so imprinted, sometimes neutering doesn't actually help because it's oh, become a habit. Okay. But it's definitely the first thing I would recommend. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to see if that happens. Yeah, which which I, I'm pretty sure it will do. Yeah. So are you offering to do it then, Mark? <laughs> I could do it, but I think they'll probably find a vet uh, a lot nearer in London um, and the, sooner rather than later, I would say, yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mark. It's always a pleasure talking to you. I'd love you to too. have you on again. Um, I think we're, we're, we're going to be doing some of these episodes together, some of the documentaries together, so we'll definitely be working together um, sure. with Animals Matter. Um, so I, I think you agree, Mark, Animals Matter. Animals definitely matter. Thank you, Andrea, and, and your team as well for all you've done over the years to help me in my campaigning. And I look forward to, to working with you and helping more animals. Thank you, Mark.